Welcome to another Three Steps to Sketch. Today we'll graph a shifted secant graph, y equals negative 3 secant of 2x plus pi over 4. We can see that we have the shift, this plus pi over 4 term is our key to knowing that we should use our shifted method. And we should notice that the b term, the 2, has been factored out. So we'll have to take that into account in our analysis. And we'll do that as we get started. So let's first take a quick look at the method outline. An overview, step one, we're finding our companion equation and all of the essential information that goes with it. So the companion equation to secant graphs will be cosine because they're reciprocals. And this method is really great because it relies on your knowledge for graphing cosine. And it's likely if you're graphing secant, you already know how to graph cosine. So with one addition to our method, you can use the cosine method do the one addition and you'll have a great secant graph. Okay, so again, step one, it's a lot of analysis. That's the bulk of the work. In step two, you'll lightly, or use a different color, plot your companion pattern and take care of your shifts. And in step three, that's the addition step. You'll take the reciprocal graph or create the reciprocal graph from your companion pattern. You'll sketch in your secant curves and then repeat for as many cycles as you need. All right, so two quick notes before we get started. First, recall that our general form for a secant equation is y equals a secant bx minus c plus d. As we noted before, our equation has actually the b term factored out of that bx minus c parentheses set. Um, so we really need to take that into account. There's a benefit of that because you can actually see more easily the phase or horizontal shift. We can look directly in the inner parentheses and see that our shift, our phase shift should be left pi over four. But if you're used to working with it in the general form, I do recommend that you just quickly distribute that two and rewrite the equation to negative three secant of two x Okay, so we distributed the two here and then distribute here as well. And that simplifies to plus pi over two. Okay, so it's a personal preference, but if you're used to working with them with that two distributed, I think that it's worthwhile to go ahead and do this. The second thing to notice we've seen in some previous examples, again, go back to that general form and we see that bx minus c, we're particularly looking at the minus here. Our equation has a plus sign. And so that's just a negative in disguise. If it helps you to rewrite the parentheses terms as 2x minus negative pi over 2, do that so that you can clearly see the c term is a negative pi over 2. And of course, your b will still be 2. So quick adjustments there. Nothing too complicated, but it is worth noting before you get started. That way you don't have any sign errors as you're going through with your analysis. All right, so now let's dig into step one. We're going to find our companion equation and all of the essential information that goes with it. So again, the companion equation is just going to be the cosine equation. So simply take your equation and rewrite it with cosine in place of secant. So I'll do it in that distributed form just since that's what we typically work with. We'll say y equals negative three cosine of two x plus pi over two. Okay, and remember we have that notation in pink uh, to help us remember the value for term c. All right, our base graph, this will make up the basis of our companion pattern in step two. A is really important because it will help us find y values for the maximum and minimum of the cosine companion pattern. And it's just the leading coefficient, so negative three. All right, because it's negative, that indicates we have a vertical reflection or a reflection over the x-axis. I like to put a star down by step two, just so I recall that the cosine pattern is going to be that vertically flipped pattern. All right, our B term we've already talked about, it's two. A couple of pieces of information that gives us, first it tells us how many cycles of our graph should happen between zero and two pi, so we should have two. And we also use it to find the period or length of a horizontal cycle. And we do that using the formula two pi over B. So 2 pi divided by 2, our period is pi. So great, we have some of the basis, basics. Now we can choose how to label our axes. So be intentional for your horizontal axis in particular. Take the period and divide by 4. 
So our scale, we should count by pi over four. And we do that so in step two, that first companion pattern, that very first cosine graph that we plot lightly, each of those will nicely align with our horizontal tick marks. That's why we choose it this way. You could use anything, but why not make it easy on yourself? All right, your vertical scale, one usually works well. Check out that value of A. Looks like that'll be sufficient in this case. All right, so let's take a minute now and label our grid. Start with the horizontal axis, count by one pi over four. So one pi over four, two pi over four reduces to pi over two, three pi over four, four pi over four is pi, five pi over four, six pi over four reduces to three pi over two, seven pi over four, and eight pi over four, of course, is two pi. So if you're working along with me, I'm going to pause, label the negative side of this axis. It's all the same values, but of course they are negative. All right, so coming back, here's what the horizontal axis looks like, completely labeled. And then it's easy to label our vertical axis, just count by ones. All right, so we are all set up for success when we get to step two. Before we go there, let's go ahead and identify our shifts. Okay, so first we'll look at our horizontal or phase shift, and we calculate that using C over B. Don't forget, because our equation had that plus sign, we kind of did some manipulation just to make sure we were in that general form, um, or just know how to look at the factored out version, that first version we had right here to see the phase shift. All right, so our C term is negative pi over two, and our B term, of course, is two, so we have negative pi over two divided by two, if you wanna write that out, that's going to be negative pi over four. And I'm gonna erase that scratch work. Notice if you look back into the version with the factored out term B, we see our phase shift right here easily just taking the opposite value or set x plus pi over four equal to zero, and that gives you directly your phase shift. So that's kind of a cool connection to make. All right, so make sure you note that that is going to be a shift left, that's one horizontal grid unit for how we have our scale set up. And then D, we don't actually have a term D here. That would be after the function, the secant or the cosine function. So no vertical shifting is going on here. All right, the last thing I like to do in step one is find the asymptotes equation. So to do that, it's very simple. All you have to do is take the inputs of the secant function. So I'm gonna just work from the original you could work from the distributed version as well. You'd get the same answer um, or a very similar equation, um, but would give you the exact same asymptotes. So take those inputs of the secant function, and you're going to set them equal to the parent vertical asymptotes of y equals secant x. Basically, you're applying the horizontal transformations to those original vertical asymptotes so that you get all of the asymptotes for your actual graph. So we know that those original asymptotes happen at pi over two plus pi k, where k is an integer. We'll talk more about that in a minute. If you aren't 100% certain of that, just go take a look at the graph of y equals secant x and you'll see those asymptotes happening at pi over two plus pi k. All right, so now all we have to do is solve for x. So let's start by dividing all of our terms in the equation by two. Okay, so on the left, that's gonna leave us with x plus pi over four. And pi over two divided by two, of course, is pi over four. And pi k divided by two is pi over two k. All right, and then we just have to subtract pi over four from both sides. And notice as we subtract pi over four from the right, it's only a like term with the other pi over four, k in that pi over two k. That's its own type of term, so those are not like terms, and we don't have to mess with it. All right, so I'm going to write our final equation in the asymptotes blank. We'll have x equals, and I'm going to go ahead and mark zero plus pi over two k, just for clarity. You could write this even more simply as x equals pi over two k. All right, so substitute in different values for k, different integers for k, and you'll get different asymptotes for your final graph. So quickly, when k is zero, of course, we should have an asymptote at x equals zero or on the y-axis for our final graph. When k is one, there should be one at pi over two. k is negative one, there should be one at negative pi over two. So it's a really great way to go ahead and find those vertical asymptotes. You have all of them there, just substituting in different values for k. 
and then you can double check the accuracy of your final graph once we get to step three. All right, so we're done with the bulk of the work. We're done with all the analysis. We're really organized. We're ready for step two, where we're going to lightly, or I'll show in light blue, we will plot our companion cosine pattern. We're basically graphing the companion equation here. And we'll start without the shifts. So recall that a cosine pattern is going to be maximum x-intercept, minimum x-intercept, but we have this star here. We noted that our a value was negative, so we should be expecting a vertical reflection. And all that does is changes the maximum and the minimum um, in the pattern. So it'll start minimum on the y-axis, x-intercept, maximum x-intercept. All right, so let's do that for our graph. Again, mark lightly or in a different color. So we'll start on the y-axis, and to get the y-coordinate of this minimum point, just look to the value of a. So our minimum for our cosine companion pattern is going to be at 0, negative 3. All right, remember we designed our horizontal axis scale very intentionally so that our next point falls on the first horizontal tick mark to the right. We have an x-intercept at pi over 4. Move to the next horizontal tick mark, so pi over 2 will be the x-coordinate of our next point. And then the y coordinate is just the opposite value of a, so that'll be 3. So there's the maximum. And finally, we'll have another x intercept at the next horizontal tick mark to the right. That's at 3 pi over 4. And you've got your unshifted companion curve. Um, so hopefully, you can see that reflected cosine curve kind of forming in there. All right, let's go ahead and take care of the shift. This time, I'm just going to move each of these four blue points, um, light blue points. Um, and we'll move them to the left, pi over 4 units. That's one horizontal grid mark. And I'll show that with x's. So take each of them and just move them one horizontal grid mark to the left. So shift left of pi over 4. All right, so I'm going to just sketch in that um, cosine curve just so you can see it. Okay, if you were graphing the companion equation, you would be done. But since we are graphing secant, we're ready for our final step, where we just basically transform this using this intermediate cosine or companion cosine function. So all you need to know is how these change. Okay, so we'll start with our first point. So we're in step three where we're creating the reciprocal graph. The minimum, go ahead and put a point there, and I'm using green here for my final graph. That's going to be our local or relative maximum for our secant curve. Okay, and we'll sketch that in in just a moment. Okay, our original x-intercept, or both of them, will turn into vertical asymptotes. Think back to if you try to take the reciprocal of a zero. Okay, that can help you remember one over zero is undefined. It's a vertical asymptote. Okay, and for the maximum from our cosine companion, that turns into, so put a point there, that'll be your local or relative minimum as part of your secant curve. Okay, we've got another vertical asymptote there coming from that zero. All right, and then sometimes I think, especially for these secant graphs, it helps to put the point, that next um, closing point, I like to call it, it's just another local maximum. Okay, so let's sketch in this curve here. So we have our secant curve, it's kind of a split curve. Okay, you have the curve that has the local minimum and then you have another split secant curve, and that's just to show a sort of split cycle. So here we have it, one cycle of our graph. Y equals negative three secant of two, x plus pi over four. And repeat for as many cycles as you need. So you're copying this exact graph. Okay, so we can sketch in the rest of that curve right here. We're moving to the right first. We have a vertical asymptote next. Then we have another local minimum, sketching that curve, another vertical asymptote, another point, so we have a local max, and another asymptote. As we're sketching, hopefully you're thinking back to your asymptotes equation. Remember we said when k was zero, you get this asymptote here on the y-axis when x is zero. Here we said k equals 1 when that asymptote was at pi over 2. And so you can plug in all the different values of k, just increasing those integers by 1 each time, and you'll get those asymptotes. So hopefully that helps you see better how this asymptotes equation works. 
Um, of course, as we move the other way, the integers will decrease by value of one. So I won't write out all of those, but hopefully it helps you get the idea. All right, so just finishing out the sketch just for completeness, completeness sake here, but I think you've probably got it at this point. Um, just a really nice clean sketch of our graph. Okay. Uh, another thing that you can double check as I'm finishing up this graph is look back to your value of B. So we said B is two, and that tells us we should have two full cycles of our secant graph happening between zero and two pi. And so as you trace through, we can see, I won't trace the asymptotes, but you can see here's half of a curve, or half of a secant cycle, a full secant cycle, one and a half, two. So we can confirm the accuracy of our graph this way as well. All right, hopefully this helps you understand how to graph shifted secant graphs with the three steps to sketch method. Uh, check the links in the video description. There will be a lot more worked examples, and I'll also post um, links for graphing any of the other trig functions. Thanks so much for watching.